I really love physical activity, exercise, and sports. Here you can see some holiday snaps of me on the snowboard, and below would be my absolute favorite sport, beach volleyball. For me, playing beach volleyball on weekends is like a little holiday. I just love it. It's fun, you meet great people, and also, of course, we all know you get a lot of health benefits out of being physically active. But I think a lot of people, when it comes to the health benefits, they mainly just think of physical activity as a means to get weight loss and weight maintenance, when in fact, there's so much more. Even from just going for a walk, you get so many benefits, like you can reduce high blood pressure, you can reduce the risk of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, some cancers, risk of dementia, and it also boosts your immune system. And last but not least, people that are physically active live longer. So when I finished high school, I decided I'm going to turn my hobby exercise into my profession. So I studied exercise science with the goal to work in exercise for rehab. And here you have a photo of my previous life in which I worked in exercise for rehab. We were doing some stretching. But I thought instead of helping people with health conditions, I think it would be more efficient and I could reach a lot more people if I help preventing health conditions. Or as this cover here says, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And there really seems to be a lot that needs to be done. Because, as this cover here says, this really seems to be the shape of things to come. But maybe this image is closer to the truth, but because in the last image, the person is just sitting in front of a computer. And that's what most of us do most of the time these days. I can say that while I'm doing research, and I'm also working in front of a computer most of the day, at least I have a sit-stand test, so I can also stand in front of the computer and not sit the whole time. But the question is, how much physical activity do we need to get these health benefits? And what intensity should it be? Maybe the message on this gravestone is a bit too simple. But let's look at what this doctor has to say to his patient. It's maybe a bit blunt what he says, but there is some truth in that. So let's look at the recommendations the guidelines of the World Health Organization, for adults, that is. I should first point out they differentiate between moderate activity and vigorous physical activity. Examples of moderate activity would be these two images, just walking your dog or going for a casual bike ride. So something that noticeably increases your heart rate but doesn't make you sweat. And vigorous activity would be something more intense that makes you sweat, puff, and pant, and on a scale from 1 to 10 of exertion would be about a 7 or an 8. And the World Health Organization recommends that adults should accumulate at least 150 minutes of moderate activity per week, only two and a half hours, not a lot, or alternatively 75 minutes of vigorous activity, or equivalent combinations of the two. And when they say equivalent, they mean that one minute of vigorous activity counts as much as two minutes of moderate activity because the energy expenditure is about twice as high. So basically, these recommendations, these amounts of activity are based on the activity energy expenditure. However, some studies have found that vigorous activity is more efficient in inducing cardiorespiratory fitness than moderate activity, independent of the activity energy expenditure. And other studies have found that this cardiorespiratory fitness is a better predictor of mortality than physical activity. So we thought it might be that vigorous activity has health benefits beyond just the higher energy expenditure. And we examined this with data from Australia from the 45 and up study, which is the largest cohort study ever conducted in the Southern Hemisphere in the state of New South Wales with more than a quarter million adults aged 45 and older who were asked a lot of questions, including their physical activity, 
where we doubled the minutes in line with the guidelines of vigorous activity. We excluded those adults that were older than 75 because our main outcome of interest was a preventable early death. And over six and a half years of follow-up, more than 7,000 of the participants passed away. And here's what we found. I have two slides with the main findings. So on this slide you can see, depending on how much physical activity people did, what was their risk for an early death. And the left column here is the zero of those that didn't do any activity. And when we compare, we can see that those that did at least some activity, but less than the recommended two and a half hours, had a huge risk reduction for an early death of 34%. And those that did meet the activity guidelines of two and a half hours had a risk reduction of almost half. And those that achieved twice the recommended amount had a risk reduction of 54%. So huge differences. This slide looks at whether this energy expenditure came just from moderate activity, which is our reference category here on the left, so people who did do activity but only moderate activity, which was, by the way, more than half our, of our sample. And we compare with those that did some, but less than 30% of the activity through vigorous activity, and those that did even more than that, more than 30% of their energy expenditure through vigorous activity. And we can see we get an additional risk reduction of 9% compared to those that didn't do any vigorous activity for those that did some vigorous activity, and a 13% risk reduction for those that did quite a lot of vigorous activity. So if we think of the risk reductions that we saw for those that do any activity, even if it's just moderate activity, which were huge, then we can think of this as the cake, and the additional benefits from some vigorous activity would be the icing on top of that cake. And our findings actually are not in line with those physical activity guidelines because we found, as we hypothesized at the beginning, that vigorous activity has health benefits beyond just the higher energy expenditure. So a media release was issued by James Cook University and we were pretty blown away by how much our article was covered in the media around the world. So we got into the London Times, New York Times, Japan Times, Forbes magazine, Cairns Post. So really only <laughs> prestigious media outlets. <laughs> this one is a Brazilian news website. You can see the instructor looks like he's almost naked there. And it definitely looks very vigorous. And talking about nudity, I have to say, the pinnacle of our media coverage, and I'm really proud to announce that, was when we heard through the media department, we got into the Playboy magazine. Thank you. And the media department told us that through Playboy.com alone, we reached more than 28 million people. I mean, 28 million men. And altogether, I couldn't believe it, they said that just the websites alone that featured our article had um, more than 1.1 billion unique visitors. So the message really got out, which was fantastic. However, unfortunately, some of the media reported things that we didn't really find in our study. Forget gentle exercise, you need to get hot and sweaty to live longer. That's not what we found, as I said. Even just moderate activity gives you huge benefits when it comes to um, longevity. So there was a bit of miscommunication there, unfortunately. Another anecdote about the media coverage was I had some radio interviews, and um, in one of these live radio interviews, this woman asked me, so can you give us some examples for vigorous activity? And I gave some examples, and then she asked me, what about horizontal folk dancing? And I remember I was sitting there with the phone thinking, hmm, English is not my mother tongue. I haven't come across this expression before. Well, I guess I know what she means. And I said, oh, well, absolutely. Sex can be very vigorous depending on position and other factors. But um, it was a morning show on the radio, so I didn't want to go into details too much. 
So what are the implications of our study? First of all, we would say that our findings indicate that vigorous activity has benefits beyond just the higher energy expenditure and that future physical activity guidelines should continue to say that moderate activity is great for us, but should maybe point out more the additional benefits that we can all get out of vigorous activity. And for all of you, the take-home message would be, if you're not doing any physical activity, it would be great if you could start doing some activity, even if it's just moderate activity, like going for a brisk walk. And for those of you who are already pretty active, but just doing moderate activity, it would be great. You could get an additional benefit out of it if you also did at least a little bit of vigorous activity, even if it's just 20, 30 minutes per week, which isn't much. Thank you.